Hey, church family, we're here again for our daily updates and devotions. As far as updates, we're coming up on Sunday, Easter Sunday, and what we're going to have is we're going to have our online service like we have been doing. Marty will be singing, and I'll be preaching. But after our service, we're going to post that at 10 o'clock. So at 10 o'clock, you can watch the Easter service. Then at 11 o'clock, we are going to post an online virtual Easter egg hunt for the children. So at 11 o'clock, there'll be another video on our YouTube channel and Facebook page in which you and your children can play along and find and hunt Easter eggs on the screen. And so we're going to try that. We're going to see how that goes. Hopefully, that will be fun for you and your family. We'll have a couple of different uh, just pages and pictures for kids to kind of find Easter eggs and all that kind of stuff. And we'll have a video that will explain how to do that as a family. And so we're looking forward to opportunities that we have to be creative, to maybe engage the whole family on Easter. So that's what we're going to be doing. We'll be having our worship service followed by a virtual Easter egg hunt. So I look forward to doing that with you on Sunday. Now, as far as our devotions, our devotions today come from Proverbs chapter 4. We're picking up in verses 10 through 19. So let's read those together. Beginning in verse 10, it says, Listen, my son, accept my words, and you will live many years. I am teaching you the way of wisdom. I am guiding you on the straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Don't let go. Guard it, for it is your life. Keep off the path of the wicked. Don't proceed on the way of evil ones. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass it by. For they can't sleep unless they have done what is evil. They are robbed of sleep unless they make everyone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. Now, when I read that section of Proverbs chapter 10, all that keeps popping into my mind is that as I walk through life, there are basically two paths. Two paths in life. There seems to be a path of light in life. And there seems to be a path of darkness and gloom. Now, we understand the basics of this, right? We understand right and wrong. There's good, there's evil. We understand all those concepts. But the problem is sometimes we confuse those two and we invert them. And sometimes we think what is good is actually evil. And we think what is evil is actually good. And sometimes we can get confused on those things. But when it comes to these two paths in life, walking the path of light, and walking the path of darkness, I think there's two ways that we respond to these. And basically, our issue comes down to how we handle walking in the light versus walking in the darkness. So I'm going to give you two examples of how Christians end up walking on the path of darkness. The first example is that often we justify our own actions, we knowingly walk down the path of wickedness, down the dark and gloomy path. Ultimately, this is just open rebellion against God. So, See, basically a lot of times we just know we're doing wrong, but we do it anyway. Now, the second example of how Christians get tripped up is sometimes we don't realize we're walking the path of darkness. Sometimes we're not paying attention. Sometimes we don't realize what we're doing until it's brought to our attention. But see, once it's brought to our attention by God's word or by a friend or a family or by your church or somebody else, when it's brought to our attention, then we have that choice again. Do we go back to choice number one, where we knowingly walk the path of wickedness? Or do we repent and do we follow Christ again? See, we are called here in verse 15 when it comes to walking the path of the wicked or rebellion darkness, however you want to describe that. It says, avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass it by. So how are you avoiding the path of the wicked, the path of darkness? See, this is, you can't wait until you're all of a sudden in a pickle and then try to make these decisions. The best way to guard yourself against falling into the path of darkness is to prepare in your heart ahead of time 
Go ahead ahead of time, set your standards, set your lines according to God's word. Say, according to God's word, I am not going to go to these type places. I'm not going to hang out with these type people on a hangout type basis. I'm not going to go here, do this or do that. See, if you wait till you're in the moment to make the decision, nine times out of 10, you'll make the wrong decision. So you need to prepare ahead of time. You need to ask yourself and evaluate yourself ahead of time. Where is my line according to scripture? How do I keep on the path of life? See, you need to do the legwork ahead of time to deal with temptation. You can't wait for temptation to come to you, then try to deal with it. You got to deal with temptation long before it comes. And that comes by reading God's word, hiding it in your heart, so that when the temptation comes, the Holy Spirit can bring to remembrance what he has taught you in his word. See, this goes back to Jesus as well. See, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I want us to focus on that phrase there, the way. Jesus is the way. See, if you ever want to know how to respond to life, how to treat other people, how to navigate life, how to stay on the light path, you look to Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the path of light. So what do you got to do? You need to run to Jesus. You need to look at who Jesus is. You need to know who Jesus is. And the only way you can know who Jesus is so that you may walk with him on the path of life is that you have to read God's word. Because God's word reveals to us who Jesus is so that we can know him, so that we can walk with him, so that we can stay on the path of light and of life. Brothers and sisters, if you don't prepare in your heart ahead of time, you will, when temptation comes, fall onto the path of darkness and gloom. But don't lose heart. God loves you. Even when we fall on that path of darkness and the gloom, God is right there to take us off and put us back on the path of life. See, he's told us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God wants to cleanse you. God wants to put you back on the path of life. So trust Jesus, walk with Jesus, repent and turn to Jesus, cling to Jesus, cry out to Jesus. He will put you on the path of light and life. Have a great evening and I look forward to talking with you tomorrow.